So your hydroponic tomatoes are finally starting to show some size. Once they get really tall like this, there's some maintenance procedures that you need to be aware of. Today I want to go over basic tomato care to ensure that you get nice, healthy, tall plants and a lot of fruit. Let's talk about it. Hey guys, welcome back to another episode of Ebb and Grow on YouTube, where we're all about aquaponics, hydroponics, and agriculture. Today's episode is all about tomato care, so let's get into it. Quick disclaimer, all the things that I will be discussing in today's video are pertinent to indeterminate varieties only. For determinate varieties, check back, I'll do a video on that later. So indeterminate tomatoes obviously can grow to be very, very large. So let's start with a few of the cosmetic maintenance tasks as it relates to indeterminate tomatoes. Probably the most immediate thing that I need to do to these tomatoes is trim the lower leaves. It's quite common once tomatoes get really tall for their lower leaves to start showing signs of deficiencies. That's perfectly normal and what that means is the tomato is allocating its nutrients to the upper part of its plant to growth and to fruit development. So those lower leaves you actually want to trim, not only to save nutrients, but they actually can harbor a lot of pests and it just generally will help with your airflow around your plants. So let's get the bottoms of these plants trimmed up. So I go over how to trim tomatoes on a few Instagram posts, but I just want to show you guys one more time. So you can see there's a lot of foliage in this lower section here, touching this plant. I want to create some separation between these plants and uh, allow for some more airflow, and it'll make my pest checks a little bit easier too. So when I trim, I want to make sure I get nice and up close to that stem with a nice sterile pair of trimming shears. Rub them with a alcohol wipe before you start your day. That'll keep them clean. It'll reduce the chance of infections on your plant. Any branch like this, you can trim without worry. Depending on your tomato variety, the branches are gonna be different, but anything without flowers or fruit on it is, is fair game to be trimmed. So I want this whole lower section to be nice and clean. Now the plants aren't touching each other anymore and it'll allow for better airflow. So now that my plants are trimmed properly, I want to make sure that I clip all of them up so they're nice and supported. Anytime you see them leaning like this, you want to make sure that you fix that because this can actually snap off and then your plant will stop growing ultimately. So always carry these in your pocket when you're working with tomatoes. So this next task can get a little bit messy, but it is just as important as trimming lower leaves. So about three to four months into my plant's life cycle, I like to do a root trim. So what I'm gonna do is remove my lids and irrigation hoses, and I'm going to remove my plant from the row. This is easier when you have uh, somebody to help you. So you can see how the roots are growing into the pipe right there. So I did this a little bit too late. If you don't do this, your whole pipe will be roots by the end of it. So I'm gonna very carefully take my plant out and I'm going to trim away a nice section of these roots. This will not hurt the plant. It will make your life easier at the end and I know it's a big mess. I saw my drain plug fall out so I'll be sure I put that back in right here. I'll fill this up with clean perlite. My roots will now have half of that bucket effectively to regrow. That won't damage the plant one bit and it'll make your life way easier when it comes to cleaning out your system. So now that my plants are pruned properly and they're upright, it's time to treat for pests. So the two main pests that I get with tomatoes are mildew problems because of the lack of airflow I also do aquaponics in this greenhouse, so it's very humid all the time, and white flies. So let's start with mildew. So mildew will look like these little white spots on the leaves and stems. It won't harm your fruit right away, but eventually if you don't treat it, it can get really, really bad and ultimately kill your plant. So how you treat that is pretty much with any plant safe base. So I'm gonna be using this product called Millstop. It's potassium bicarbonate. Any 
bicarbonate or carbonate material will raise the pH of the leaf surface, which will ultimately not let the fungus grow. So you can use baking soda, sodium bicarbonate as well, but plants generally don't like sodium. So that's why I try to stick with either like potassium carbonate, probably you could use like calcium hydroxide as a foliar application to change the leaf pH. But yeah, any of those bases are gonna do that. And you wanna go very lightly with these things. This is a half a teaspoon per a half a gallon, one teaspoon per gallon. Another common pest, like I mentioned, is the white fly. Typically, I'll just go around my plants and just tap them. And white flies will fly off pretty fast and look like a snowflake. So they're pretty small, so keep your eyes peeled. I don't have any currently to show you. They're pretty easy to combat. You can either spray them with water, which I do sparingly in here because of my mildew problems, or you can actually vacuum them with a shop vac. That method also works pretty well for me. One thing you have to do is keep an eye out for their eggs. They look like small water droplets on the underside of leaves. They're super small, and they honestly could be confused with water, but they're not. They're white fly eggs. So just periodically check your plants for any insect activity and treat it as you go. As far as nutrition goes, right now my plants are in the flowering and fruiting stage. So my fertilizer primarily consists of phosphorus and potassium with a small amount of nitrogen. This is gonna get me a lot of flowers, some fruit coming in, but my fruit will remain green mostly. As soon as I'm happy with the thickness of my plants, the amount of flowers, the amount of green tomatoes, I'll actually cut the nitrogen off completely and that will cause all these tomatoes to turn red. But right now, like I said, small amount of nitrogen, a lot of phosphorus, a lot of potassium. So that's pretty much it, guys. If you do those things, chances are you'll end up with a nice, healthy tomato crop. So I got some cleaning up in here I got to do now. But if you want to see anything, drop it in the comments. Anything you guys want to see, I'd be happy to do a video on. So let me know on any of my platforms. And thanks for watching.